friends, this is Fire on Pop, and we have another installment of my Armed Citizen Stories. And this, once again, coming right out of First Freedom Magazine, and um, right here, the Armed Citizen Stories. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get right to these. I haven't really pre-read them, so I want to keep my, uh, my reactions uh, uh, clean. So let's go. Nothing rehearsed here. Anyway, a college student, Christopher Boys, heard knocking sounds coming from his front, from his, the first floor of his home. When he walked toward the source of the noise, he was confronted by two strange men in his apartment. One of the men was pointing a handgun straight at Boys. When Boys cried out, it was heard at, by his roommate, Raymond, who instinctively grabbed his legally owned AR-15 and readied it. It was just moments before one of the intruders made it to Raymond's bedroom, uh, Raymond's door. Upon seeing Raymond's rifle, both men fled the apartment. Nothing was taken. No shots were fired. After the innocent incident, Boy said, I'm happy he saved my life. I was very thankful he had his gun. And this was in Rochester, New York. Now, students, uh, probably living off campus, it doesn't say because I don't believe in New York you're allowed... Uh, <clears throat> firearms on campus. Anyway, moving right along, Debbie Keeney, 55, uh, was at home with his, uh, her sister Donna uh, Carlisle, 47, when she stepped outside to smoke a cigarette. As she closed the door behind her, a man approached and pushed his way inside the apartment. The man knew Kearney, uh, the man threw Kearney to the floor and put Carlisle in a chokehold. He demanded money as uh, Carlisle grasped for air. Kearney was quick to, uh, quickly able to get her 22 caliber Derringer she kept hidden in her side table drawer. She warned the man to release her sister or she would shoot. When he continued to demand money, Keeney fired. The 33-year-old intruder was taken to a local hospital to be treated for two gunshot wounds and was listed in critical condition. This happened in Highland, Missouri. Now, you know, a lot of people are going to turn around and tell you that uh, a 22 is not a self-defense weapon. Well, they just put this guy in critical condition in the hospital. Um, uh, you, you couldn't ask for a better result. Anyway, let's move right along. Ernest Robinson, an assistant high school base basketball coach, was escorting two of his female team members from the building one evening when they were approached by two teenage boys. One of the teenagers wielded a gun. The gunman ordered the girls to leave as the uh, other teen yanked at the, the chain Robinson wore around his neck. Robinson quickly pulled out his concealed pistol and fired at both assailants, killing one and wounded the other. The surviving per uh, perpetrator is now being charged with one count of armed robbery and one count of assault with intent to rob while armed. And that was in the Detroit News, Detroit, Michigan. Three masked men entered Plaza Jewelers one afternoon, one carrying a gun and the other two yielding hammers. Store owner Alfonso a Angela spotted the men when the store window and grabbed the gun he kept behind the, behind the counter. The two men with hammers, one carrying a bag, were approaching the glass cases of the jewelry when Angela cocked the hammer of his gun. Within seconds, the men were making a hasty exit. Police were called and two male suspects were later taken into custody. Fair Oaks, California. Now, folks, you can't ask for a better result. I mean, um, you know, we all love shoot 'em ups okay? And we all practice to shoot to kill and all that good stuff. But sometimes, just presenting your weapon is enough to avert a conf confrontation. And that is a desired result, a very desired result. A 34-year-old man entered a bank carrying a handgun when <clears throat> that was later determined to be a realistic plastic replica. He pulled a black mask over his face and demanded money from the teller. His robbery attempt, however, was thwarted by another bank's employee's very real Smith & Wesson 357 revolver. The employee, a, legally, a legal car uh, concealed carry permit holder, fired his weapon after realizing the men robbing the bank were armed. 
The robber fled the scene, uh, leading the police to a high-speed car chase. The suspect was soon caught and hospitalized for a gunshot wound to the jaw. He was later charged with attempted bank robbery and leading police on a high-speed chase. There was reportedly no other injuries. And that was in uh, Trimble, uh, Missouri. It was before dawn when Christine Lewis entered her bathroom and spotted the silhouette of a man outside the window. The man had torn off the window screen and was attempting to break in. Christine's husband, John Lewis, heard the commotion from the bedroom and retrieved his 38 Smith & Wesson revolver. The man outside had failed to force open the window and was now lurking outside their home. Lewis walked out his front door and confronted the man. The man started to approach Lewis despite repeated warnings. The two remained in a standoff until deputies arrived and took the man into custody. He was jailed on multiple charges. I own a gun for reasons like this. I want to protect myself, Lewis said. The way I see it, your home is sacred ground and you have the right to protect it. And this was in uh, White City, Oregon. Amen. Kelby Smith, 34, pulled into his brother's driveway and was carrying his two-month-old son in a car seat when a man with a pistol approached him and demanded money. Smith, Smith knelt in front of his son to shield him uh, as the robber held a gun to Smith's head. As uh, Smith handed over a small amount of cash, he pulled his own gun from his holster. Upon seeing the firearm, the robber fled, but turned and pointed his gun back at Smith, who fired his gun. The man was later identified as he entered a hospital seeking treatment for a gunshot wound. And that was in Columbus, Ohio. Okay, I have an addition. This is from The Bullet, which is a publication of the New York um, State Rifle and Pistol Association. And they, uh, they generally have an armed citizen story uh, section. So, and this is from the New York uh, area. So, uh, Rochester Police Chief James Shepard says a resident of a home confronted two burglars with a semi-automatic ri assault rifle and scared the would-be burglars off. It happened around midnight Tuesday. Chief Shepard says the weapon is, is legal and is uh, legally owned by the resident. It's the style of gun that the homeowner used that, uh, that some anti-gun advocates say should e shouldn't even be available. News 10 NBC spoke with the homeowner Wednesday night. He says that he shudders to think what would have happened if he hadn't had the gun. He believes that the gun has saved his life and the lives of his roommates. Gun control has been a hot topic since the Christmas Eve shooting on Lake Road in Webster and the school shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. New York State is the first in the nation to enact stricter gun laws following those tragedies. The gun in this case was an AR-15 a semi-automatic rifle, and according to Chief Shepard, it was registered and legal. Officials estimate that there are about not 1 million semi-automatic rifles in the state. News 10 NBC asked uh, Chief Shepard about this incident and, that, and if this could be a case in support of personal gun ownership. I think in terms of the ban or the legislation that was passed, it wasn't about banning AR-15s. It's really about banning weapons with certain characteristics to military weapons and to uh, grandfathered in the number of those weapons that were pre-owned prior to the governor signing his legislation. So from my perspective, I don't have a problem with anyone owning any type of weapon when it comes down to what would serve the citizens of Rochester best. If we do not have weapons, the result in mass murder <clears throat> that's been... The, uh, for every, that's that's the what's the best for everyone," said Shepard. Shepard says he is not interested in disarming the public and supports the constitutional right to bear arms. His fight, he says, are the guns on the street that you, that wreak havoc in our cities. Police are still uh, looking for the burglary suspects. Journal News, January twenty third, thirteen. Police in the town of Newburgh, not far from where I live, are investigating a home invasion robbery in which shots were fired. Residents of 109 South Plank Road told officers three men wearing masks and armed with handguns entered their home, threatening them and demanding money. One of the residents was on the second floor and was told there were masked men on the first floor. He grabbed a loaded shotgun and confronted an uh, confronted sus suspect in the stairway and fired one shot at him. All three suspects fled the house. The residents fired two more shots at the suspects 
as they ran across the backyard toward the Highland Avenue. It is unknown if, if any of the suspects were wounded. Evidence at the scene indicates a window to the suspect's vehicle may have been shattered. The SUV headed east on Highland Avenue. None of the residents in the home were injured. Anyone with information is asked to call Newburgh Town Police. Uh, another great ending to a story. Anyway, uh, you can find these stories all over. Like I said, this is in New York State uh, Rifle and Pistol Association's uh, magazine. Uh, there we have it. That's this uh, month's installment of the Armed Citizen story. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you found them uh, enlightening, uh, encouraging. I'm sure there are many, many more people in Boston today uh, that feel that they uh, need to get a home protection weapon. I would hate to be sitting at home knowing there were a couple of bombers w loaded with guns and, and bombs uh, in my area and me not have any way to protect myself and my family. Uh, or my property. So, uh, uh, home defense, key. I hope you enjoyed the stories. This is Fire on Pop. You be safe out there, and God bless. Bye now.